Hello, everybody. My name is Rick Habgood, and I'm going to be your host for this segment of Citizens Forum. Our guest for this segment is Ronnie Earnhardt, and Ronnie is the Vice President of Fair Vote Canada, BC. And we're going to be talking about the past referendum that we just got the results from about approximately a month ago. And originally it was put forth that it was going to be a very tight race, that actually the percentages were like very low between the yes and the no camp. So uh, there was a tremendous amount of campaigning that happened at the very end of the referendum. Then the referendum ended, then the results came by, came, came forward, and it was 49% on the no side, they wanted to keep first past the post, 31% on the proportional representation side, and 20% didn't even vote at all. Now when you subtract the 20% and just add the, uh, the no and the yes, it works out to 61% said no to proportional representation and 39% said yes. And it was rather confusing, the re I wasn't expecting that. And I think that the majority of people weren't expecting such a wide gap between the yes and the no. And Ronnie, what happened? Well, a lot of things happened and a lot of people were surprised by the, ro the results because we were expecting a tighter, tighter race. But in the end, it kind of shows that the, um, the no side uh, was more effective in their messaging and they were able to reach people. If you look at the breakdown of the results on a riding basis, you see that in the areas where it passed, we passed by maybe a margin of 60%, we were doing well, but in the areas that we, um, that we failed, which is the majority of the, the province, we would fail by huge margins, like we'd get a 20% turnout. So when you average that across the province, um, we ended up with the, this result. So it showed a, a large amount of non-uniformity across BC in the opinions. Well, in the, there was an exit poll that the research company did after the referendum. And what it showed was that those who chose not to vote they chose not to vote because they found the, refer uh, the, the ballot to be too confusing and um, they just were not feeling very informed. And I know that's a, that was a big problem in this campaign. And so the large major majority of people who uh, handed in the ballot thought that it was confusing. And 39% um, and of it uh, the existing system, 39% opting to change it. Well, that's wrong. So the thing is that the majority of people that I came across during the campaign found the, uh, the ballot very confusing. Now, according to research polls, uh, the, the number one issue who chose not to vote was not feeling informed enough and the people who did chose did choose to to vote uh, found number one they found that the the no side was was their message was clear the yes side's messages were not being delivered like and that was due to the media and uh, a lot of the people that I talked to during that campaign they got most of their information from CFAX and the mainstream media. So what else do you think contributed to the, the referendum failing? Well, I do think that exit poll was spot on and that a big reason why it failed was that people didn't feel informed. But I think I want to delve into that a little bit more deeply. So the uh, issues involved are fairly complex. and it's easier to vote for the status quo than to vote for change. And to explain the issues involved in electoral reform and in, in these particular systems that were chosen on the ballot is a much more complex thing than the no side messaging. And uh, there's a famous quote by Joseph Goebbels who said, uh, if you tell a big lie and you repeat it often enough, 
people will believe it. And, in, and unfortunately, that really happened here. The yes side was a bit all over the map. There was, uh, the education wasn't deep enough. The education covered the mechanics of the systems, which confused people a lot. Some people got it, but they, there was no or inadequate education on what mattered. The basics of what proportional representation is, the reason why we're looking at changing at all, and what benefits it would bring to society. People have to have a reason to make such a big change. And that reason was not explained to people. And the educational materials coming out of um, Elections BC, they were adequate for what they were, but they were details of the systems. They weren't the big picture, and they didn't keep give people motivation. On the other side, and then um, all the yes side, the yes side was sort of fragmented into many groups. There's the NDP, there was the Greens, there was independent groups, there was Vote PRBC, the official proponent, all kind of spreading this happy, happy messaging, but it wasn't particularly focused. On the no side, we had uh, the Liberals very strongly campaigning with a very focused campaign with very narrow messaging. And they spread it effectively through uh, media and um, people heard it, and they listened to it, and it was little sound bites that they could understand. And even though in, in many instances what they were saying was completely untrue, uh, people believed it. Things like, You're, you won't have local representation, your MLA is going to be in Vancouver, a goose stepping Nazis on their TV ads. People may not have been um, uh, believed it, but they, they get the gist of the fear factor of the potential of a small party to hold the balance of power. And that really, really frightened people. So as I spoke to people, educated people, knowledgeable people, I would get these, these results like, um, oh, well, if we have PR, then it's just, uh, you don't get to vote for your candidate. You can just vote for a party list. So the, the no side was very effective in getting their message across about party list, party list, party list, whereas in reality, none of the systems, it wasn't clear enough whether they were going to have party lists or not because there wasn't sufficient detail presented on the systems to determine exactly how they worked. So the confusion was as much on what wasn't said as what was said to people. Right. And I think that uh, one of the things that I learned from, from the campaign and door knocking is that uh, a lot of people did not receive any information through the mail uh, about why we need change. Yeah. There, there was really no real broad reason and, 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 and there was no understanding as to why uh, change was needed. And when I asked people, well, you know, especially if they voted no, I said, well, where do you get your information from? Because they were not getting information. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, a lot of them weren't, weren't on the Facebook pages we're on. And so where would they get their information from? And so, yeah, CFAX, it was the TC, it was CKNW, it was all the, the, the media that was uh, supporting the no side, basically. That's where they got most of their, that, that's what I learned anyways from the campaign trail. So I thought to myself, well, how do you counter that? Because I know Fair Vote Canada, being a part of it, and you know, you are the, you are the chapter chair of the Victoria Group. And I think that Fair Vote Canada did a fantastic job at getting the message out to where we were getting the message out. But unfortunately, we, we just couldn't be on every single doorway. We just couldn't do it. So consequently, we needed a, 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 a help from, from many different quarters. And to be honest, uh, that help was a little late in arriving. And um, I think that was part of the reason why we were not successful. Uh, so one of the things that I like to talk about is that uh, most of the PR groups, along with the, the NDP Green Electoral Reform Task Force, uh, presented, to, presented to David Eby a, a, a very clear question that they wanted to see on the ballot. 
but he changed that into two questions, and one of the questions being the, the systems. Why do you think he changed that? Like, why didn't he take the advice of what it seemed to be people that were in the know and had a very clear understanding of what the electric needed? Well, there's multiple reasons there. Um, he, uh, there was input received from thousands and thousands of, of British Columbians mm -hmm. via this survey. And it's impossible to have a perfect question. If you only have one question that's general in nature, do you, uh, would you like to change our system to PR or remain the same, people won't vote for that. They mm -hmm. won't vote for the unknown. And they're also looking at the precedent of the previous two referendums in 2002, 2005 and 2009, where there was the choice between the current system and one particular system, and those both failed. So they were going for something different here. They were genuinely trying to give people choices, and where it fell down, again, is in the education, and the education wasn't there, and the lobbying on the yes side was not up to the strength of the lobbying on the no side. And the, the NDP campaign, the MLAs did not hold town halls. They did not go out and make speeches. The liberals were all over it, and their messages were heard. And when people hear messages from people that they respect that are in positions of power, even if they're currently in the opposition, they're still a major party, they believe it. Um, there is no law against uh, lying um, in political statements. There's truth in advertising laws that do not apply to politicians. So there is no uh, legal basis to rebut any of the information that was coming out. And uh, um, the yes side was kind of out campaigned. So I don't blame David B Eby. I don't blame the media. Certainly, I do think that the media was biased. I absolutely agree with you. But I don't think that that's necessarily the major issue. It was part of the whole picture, That's which right. led to the defeat. I agree. I, I, I don't blame the media 100% for sure, but they, they were in there for sure. Yeah. And um, there were many factors. Uh, one of the things that the research poll showed is that approximately 30% of the Green voters voted no to pro rep. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't make any heads or tail out of that one. Why would a, a Green voter vote no? To pro rep, I, I, what, what, there's nothing, nothing but up for the for the Green yeah. Party. I think the Green voters voted no for the same re general reasons that other people voted no. They found it confusing. They didn't necessarily, um, they weren't necessarily doing it for strategic advantage. Their interests are in the betterment of society, and and they believed the same no rhetoric that uh, was successful with the population as a whole. Same thing applies to the NDP voters who voted against. They uh, listened to the media. They may have conservative values. They, they needed to be convinced, and they weren't convinced by, uh, by the campaigns and the information that they had. Yeah, I was with a fellow today, and he basically told me, he lives in Sydney, and, and he, he said to me, he said, I received no reason to vote yes for pro, pre, uh, proportional representation from my party. Now, one of the things, though, is that the exit poll, the research company exit poll, show that a vast majority, 70%, either moderately agree or moderate or strongly agree that a party should only win majority power if its candidates won a majority of votes. This sounds a little bit like PR. Yeah. So 70%, yeah. that was, that's not bad. Ronnie, time is up already, if you can believe it. Boy, that went quick, didn't it? My name is Rick Habgood. I've been uh, interviewing Ronnie Ern Earnhardt, who is the Vice President of Fair Vote Canada, BC. And uh, thank you so much for listening. I'd like to thank the Shaw staff for the work that they do and also the wonderful volunteers. Uh, this show wouldn't be possible without them. And uh, till next time, thank you.